Hello, hello, and welcome to myfinanceteacher.org. Today, we're going to look at Bitcoin again. Unfortunately, our previous expectations about this bull flag didn't actually work out. Before we continue, let me remind you guys to subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and click that bell notification. Thanks a lot. In my previous video on Bitcoin, I said that patience was a virtue with Bitcoin, and we had to see if this bull flag was going to work out. At that time, it seemed to be a relatively good risk-reward ratio. Unfortunately, the risk actually realized with around 2 or 3% loss. And that actually served as another reminder to me and hopefully to you guys that it's important to use stop losses to avoid losing too much capital. Stopping out at just above $9,000 now look, of course, much, much better than uh, holding that position down to the current level of $6,800. And in my previous video, I also mentioned that it was unlikely for the ongoing cycle to top as soon as only day three before actually rolling over into the declining phase. If you look at history of Bitcoin, which we will do in a minute, you'll see that these Bitcoin cycles last for around a couple of months. Now, with hindsight, of course, we see that although it was very unlikely, this cycle nevertheless did top on only day three. And I think all of the cycles, or at least most of the cycles, topped in the early part of the regular cycle duration, all the way since the beginning of 2018, since the beginning of the current bear market in Bitcoin. However, over the last few days, I'm getting excited about Bitcoin as well, because I think there will be a nice bounce coming up soon. As I mentioned, we have these sort of cycles in Bitcoins happening roughly every couple of months or so. This previous cycle lasted for three months. That was unusually long. And actually, to average out the duration to two months, again, over a period of a year or so, we might see a short cycle coming up. Maybe the current ongoing cycle might turn out to be a short one, which, instead of lasting for two months, will last maybe for a month and a half or anything like that. That is a possibility. With the current length of already 33 days, we might be relatively soon when a bounce comes and brings us maybe close to 50-day moving average. Wouldn't that be nice? Why 50-day moving average? Because if you look at Bitcoin history, even in the very difficult part of the bear market, starting from the beginning of 2018, these bounces in the two-month cycles in Bitcoin brought us at least up to 50-day moving average and often above that moving average as well. The blue line here, these bounces bring us at least up to that 50-day moving average. Continuing to look at the history all the way since the beginning of the ongoing bear market in Bitcoin, RSI has reached third deepest oversold level. It's currently at 21.46 and it's only been more oversold in September 2019 when it dropped just in a few days from around 10,000 all the way down to around 8,000. And the most oversold RSI reached in this bear market was in November last year when Bitcoin dropped again just in about a week or so from around 6,500 down to 3,500 or so. So the technicals look very interesting. Bitcoin is very oversold on the 14-day RSI. Bitcoin is poking through the lower range of the Bollinger Band. And the current price is quite far below the 50-day moving average. One concern here is the duration of the ongoing cycle, which is only 33 days, but when two months is an average cycle duration for Bitcoin, it's quite likely to have shorter cycles than that. So to be honest with you guys, a few days ago when Bitcoin bounced in one day from 6,800 to around 73,000, I again thought that there was a nice risk reward ratio and I entered a long position at about 73,000 with an only small part of my Bitcoins. As I mentioned, I hold around 90% over long term, I hodl it and I only trade with 10% of the Bitcoin portfolio. I guess I might have to do what I preach, but with Bitcoin so oversold, I haven't actually dropped my long position, even though the recent lows have been breached. So over the next few weeks, a couple of possibilities I see for Bitcoin is that the current cycle finishes early, and we see the next cycle going back at least up to the 50-day moving average and possibly even poking above that. And that, as I said, would be quite nice. Given how oversold Bitcoin is at the moment, I think this is a more primary scenario for my personal trading. I would give it 60-65% chance. And another possibility is Bitcoin cycle lasts as usual for around a couple of months, 
meaning that over the next few days we probably will get just a short-term bounce to bring the RSI a little bit out of that deep oversold level before Bitcoin actually drops further within the ongoing two-month cycle. Again, given how deeply oversold Bitcoin is at the moment, this is a less likely scenario for me. I would give it only 35 to 40 percent chance. In either case, I will try to get out of my long positions either on a small or relatively more significant bounce, if and when it comes. And if the upcoming bounce from oversold levels turns out to be a short-term one, I will try to catch some more long positions near the price of around $6,000. After all, that price level has been a support zone for a very long time. And also based on the cycle duration, again, if the upcoming bounce is short-term, confirming that cycle continues, we might actually reach that $6,000 price level by the time when ongoing two-month cycle wants actually to give us a cycle low. So that's my strategy over the next few weeks. Let me know guys what you think, especially about the stop loss at current deeply oversold levels. Looking forward for your opinion. Before you share your opinion, remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and good luck in your trades.